Not here. All right, let's do the helicopter tour first, and then we'll do the wing flex. Because opening that airplane with the wing flex wants to crash not only once. One thing in addition, the final version for Europe will have a little bit more airports. Right. Added by Aerosoft. Uh, Correct. Aerosoft will be doing distribution and add-ons for X-Plane. Um, Aerosoft is going to ship X-Plane 10 through their retail outlets, and they're going to put in special, uh, some good airports and maybe some European scenery type flavor, perhaps, to give a more uh, detailed uh, product. And they, so, are, they are bundled in the box. We haven't made all the bundling decisions yet, but X-Plane 10 will sell with a dual-layer DVDs and full global scenery. The only thing that is not clear yet is exactly how much European customization or airport customization we're going to be able to fit onto those eight dual-layer DVDs. Okay, so now what we see here is the, uh, the roadmap and the Autogen scenery. Um, I'm getting kicked around by the wind a little bit, so let me... Uh, let's go to weather. Oh, and here you can see the, the weather is um, not the same anywhere on the planet. So you get whole random patterns where you have weather in whole different areas. So you can clearly fly around here, but if you're going to this area, there's going to be weather in the way. But I am not trying to demo weather right now because I just feel like uh, I'm showing you the scenery. Ah, oh, there we go, much better. Okay, so forgetting about the weather and the wind and the turbulence for a moment, why don't we take a look at the, uh, at the autogen world. Okay, so what we have is somewhat low rendering options, and you can see that we took the road map that is real, and then we just planted little buildings uh, beside the roads. And it doesn't look too impressive quite yet, but once you start coming over to the, uh, the major highways, things can start to get a little bit more interesting. Um, these roads here are autogen roads. They were not uh, made by a human being, but instead a computer program. And so because of that, this level of detail uh, exists for every road on the planet. Um, and you can see the simple little neighborhoods off to the right and the, uh, the more uh, complex highways here. And over time, we're going to be making this autogen more and more realistic. And because this is all generated by a computer, not a person, uh, we can always increase the accuracy uh, in subsequent renders. All right, so why don't we follow along here? And you can see we have things like the exit ramps and uh, the signs. Whoops, okay, well, I'll probably do that. And then every, every single sign on the highway is an inside joke. Uh, every sign name is, the, uh, is an author or somebody or a relative of somebody in the X-Plane community. Uh, Lori Ville, Lori is uh, Ben's wife, and uh, Ben Suffolk is the one that did the algorithms that uh, generated all this scenery. The org, that's xplane.org. So uh, I don't know if this is going to work too well on this projector, but let's give it a try. We're going to go, go to a uh, nighttime uh, rendering here. <coughs> and every light in the X-Plane 10 scenery is um, a, a dynamic light source that will light up everything around it. So when you do <coughs> night uh, scenery in X-Plane, you do not have a single light map. There are no light maps in X-Plane. Instead, every light actually casts light on things around it. And so if multiple scenery packages are all combined together, the lights from one guy's scenery package will light up the other guys. So a spotlight from one guy's package can be pointing over at a flaw in somebody else's package and it will light it up. Um, and if we really look closely, and you'll be able to see it more accurately over at the Aerosoft, Aerosoft booth, but the, uh, the cars and trucks are being lit up uh, as they pass underneath the street lights. And of course, they're being lit up uh, as well uh, by the, the spotlight awesome. on my helicopter. Awesome. Yes? Rendering, centering, HDR. Um, oh, did I, maybe I didn't turn HDR on? Okay, let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah, okay, let's turn that on. That would also help. Um, turning it on. All right. It'll have to reload scenery, so it'll take a moment. Why don't I grab another question on the scenery loads? Any, any other questions that maybe wants to ask? You also have an example yes. of uh, HD quality. 
I'm sorry? An example of the ATC quality. HD quality? ATC. ATC. Oh, ATC. Uh, we don't have sound hooked up to this computer right now, and I don't have the sound files in from the authors yet. The closest thing I'll be able to do, I'll tell you what, when I take questions at the end, I will just leave the thing running, and you will start to see, and I'll be parked on the ramp, and you're going to start to see other airplanes coming and going and taking off and landing. And so you'll see the results of the ATC, even though you don't hear the ATC quite yet. Um, and when you use ATC for your own purposes, rather than just watching the other guys fly it, you, you file a flight plan, and it takes you from gate to gate. He does give you taxi instructions down to every last taxiway, down to the runway, clearance, handoff, from to ground, to tower, to departure, to, to center, to approach, to tower, to ground again. Sits and, sits and stars? I'm sorry? Uh, I don't think we have sits and stars right now, but that's just me the type of thing that will be added in over time. And right now, I think it's kind of fuzzy as to whether operations are VFR or IFR. Uh, it just kind of tells you what to do. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, whoever thought of HDR is obviously right, because now you really see the dynamic lights. This is not a light map. And the way you can really tell that it's not a light map is if you watch the cars carefully enough, you'll actually see them light up as they uh, come through the uh, each light. Like, watch this truck coming down here. Um, yeah, every one of these. Yeah, look at the trucks off to my left coming through the light sources. You see. So um, everything is lit up by these lights. Every light you see is dynamic. Uh, the, the headlights in one car will even light up the the car in front. Um, so this is the, the level of detail. It's called a deferred rendering engine. And so what it does is over the, the 20th of a second or whatever it takes to make a frame, it adds up all the lights. And then once it's added up all the lights, uh, each light can be applied to all the imagery around it. And yeah, so we see this bus up here off to my left coming in, in and out of the, the lights. And of course, this is a nice enough little trick on the highway. But, uh, well, okay, that was just a bit. But uh, uh, it, it's also very useful on the airport ramp um, when you can see aircraft actually lit up by the, uh, the airport ramp lights. Whoops, that's not a correction. And you can see how every little bit of geometry is, is lit up by the, uh, the light of uh, the helicopter here. And then if you want to be a police helicopter chasing guys, you know, obviously this is not, not the worst thing you're going to find to do. Um, okay, now why don't we see if we can find our way back to uh, SeaTac Airport, and uh, from there we can uh, take a look at the uh, terminal and ramp area to show what kind of uh, airports are possible. And I will go ahead and gain some altitude as we head back in that direction, and you start to see just how many lights is possible to have. And needless to say, this projector cannot begin to do it justice. This is the app that will fill a gigantic high-res bright LCD in a dark room and make you forget about the real world for a few moments, whereas this becomes a totally immersive experience. And my knowledge of uh, Seattle uh, geography is somewhat limited. And every, every one of these lights is, is truly three-dimensional. You don't see a single light map here. They're all 3D real, real dynamic lights. I think I'm heading in the right direction. The stars, are they placed like in the real world? Yes, the stars are correct. Um, okay. Oh, this is us. Ow, we can't. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, how about another question or two while we restart? Sure. How about undocking instruments? <laughs> oh, undocking instruments. So what we've got are two-dimensional panels, obviously, and 3D cockpits. But um, I don't foresee immediately having the ability to undock instruments and have them floating around in their own window. Now, sometime during the version 10 run, I'm going to make it so you can have all the windows you want. Any window can display anything you like and you can drag the windows around anything, any way you like on the monitor, and that way all the questions about can I look at X on window Y on monitor Z on computer D uh, will hopefully be answered yes. 
So it has a new level of flexibility that will come sometime in the 10 run, or the 10.x run. It's not the type of thing we're gonna do for 10 because building an entire new world, and a weather world, and a physical world, and an air traffic control world, and a multi-threading uh, world, we're not gonna try to do more than that for version 10. So um, multi-window multi, multi -window support is definitely one of the things we're gonna be looking at over the coming, say, six months, or something like that. Okay, one okay. question. Uh, about, about the artificial uh, traffic. Uh -huh. uh, if I understand you right, you you even calculate the artificial traffic with the full aerodynamic model. Yes, so, that is correct. Okay. Okay. So thanks for the answer, but it sounds like uh, spending a lot of power on. on that's why we have. It's a lot of power. Other airplanes have a lot of CPU power put into them, and if you set a gusty wind condition and there is a helicopter hover taxiing down the taxiway, you will actually see him getting blown around by the wind and working his flight controls to try and hover taxi uh, along the area that air traffic control has cleared him for. And the only way to have that level of realism is to allocate enough CPU to do it. That's why you need multi, multi, multi cores for this thing. Why don't we do the, do the one at the bottom? The very bottom, yeah. Okay, okay, it'll take a few moments to load, so I can take another question. Okay. Um, you mentioned there will be, as usual, three versions of Explain for the PC, Mac, and Linux. Correct. Um, all platforms have different graphical engines, mm -hmm. like DirectX. We use OpenGL on all. Okay, so that's. OpenGL. The graphics are the same for everything. Absolutely, yes. The sound isn't. We had to, to mess around with slightly different sound on the different platforms, but OpenGL is the same on all platforms, including iPhone and iPod and iPad, by the way, and Android, and Palm. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Palm matters that much, but, um, okay, uh, all right, I guess we got time for another question. Got any more? Okay, yes. Yeah, but thank you. About five or six years ago, you talked about explain cars or explain auto. X auto, right. Will this engine be good enough for it? I was buzzing the highway for a reason. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> the goal would be that the detail in X Plane 10 is so good that you could use it for a driving sim. And X Plane Automotive has always been the second item on my to do list. Um, it may be that with this engine, I may finally be able to spin off a driving sim that is based on the same virtual world as this flight sim. And uh, that's why I'm buzzing the roads and the helicopters. I want to see how good the roads look. So um, in X-Auto, I've actually had X-Auto running on my own, my own Macintosh. And uh, the thing is, with the X-Auto that I initially created, it's got all sorts of barrel rolls and loops and jumps and stuff. With realistic physics, realistic physics, where you go through actual loops and barrel rolls. And that doesn't really fit in very well with the real world scenario. It fits in with the crazy Dr. Seuss, you know, plausible world scenario. Um, anybody want to take a guess? If you come into a loop at 200 miles an hour, full throttle, Corvette, Bit here, gas pedal to the floor, you enter the loop at 200 miles an hour. How high the loop has to be for you to just barely be at zero G at the top so your tires don't come off the road from the centrifugal force? You know, when you swing the water around in a bucket, the faster you swing, the wider the arc is going to be. Anybody want to guess what that arc is going to be for a 200 mile an hour entry? How tall that loop is going to be? A guess? It's about a thousand feet. A thousand feet. If you come into a loop at 200 miles an hour and turn that kinetic energy into potential energy, right? It's all about energy conservation. The potential turns into the kinetic turns into potential. Speed turns into altitude. You will come over the top of that loop, inverted in your car, just barely with your tires on the road at a thousand feet above the ground. And it's a little bit of an unsettling feeling when your tires start to separate from the road because you only came in at 190 miles an hour. And as you start to separate from the road, you suddenly become very aware you don't have wings. And uh, they turn a driving simulator in the air, not a flying simulator in the air. And the first time that happened to me is actually one of the most visceral experiences I've ever had in any simulation. But, um, okay, well, what do we want to look at now? We've, uh, we've done the, the helicopters, some clouds, some water. I guess I'll show you the wing flights. Aircraft. <laughs> At triple seven, this should be fine. 